All right. I think that uh, we'd like to get started right on time. Some other folks I know will be joining us because I did send out a quick reminder. But um, to see the slides uh, that we're going to be using today, uh, please go to the, uh, the ReadyTalk website, R-E-A-D-Y-T-A-L-K.com, and then you can um, log in as with the same end number, which is 789-4467. All right, so uh, I see the first message is we have Agata from Poland. So thank you very much for calling in. Um, we actually had uh, uh, folks at the conference last year from Poland as well, so we're very pleased about that. And I think two companies this year. So we're going to start the one-to-one -one business connections webinar now, and it is something that both SIIA and Educational Systemics, our partner, have worked on for oh my lord, Mary, some years now. I think <laughs> but eight I know eight years. Uh, so we, uh, but it, it's a great partnership and. Um, we really appreciate their help. So we're going to have different people, I think, um, talk about a few different things today. And the first thing I want to remind you of before we get started and I have everyone introduce themselves is would you please put notes, um, hellos, or questions in the chat box. On the lower left part of your screen, you should see the chat box. And then you can also um, note who you want it to go to, just um, one of us or uh, a person, and um, we'll, we'll send notes out there as well to all of you. So first thing, um, I've got a chance now to give my welcome. Uh, I run the Education Division. We'll talk about that just in another minute. But uh, Lindsay, do you want to introduce yourself, and then Mary, and then Tila, just so that they know your voices when you speak later? Uh, sure. Thanks, Karen. Um, my name is Lindsay Harmon. I work closely with Karen in the Education Division of SIA. I'm the Market and Policy Analyst, and I do a lot of the data collection and um, materials gathering for our conferences and programs and all of that kind of stuff, and just um, generally help Karen keep the division running. Yes, which I appreciate greatly. Uh, Mary. Hi. I'm Mary Ladon, Vice President at Educational Systemics and also the financial person. So I work on contracts and uh, that aspect of, of the uh, business, but I've also done others, other things in our business. So if you have any questions, as Karen said, I've been participating in the one-to-ones for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to answer those questions. That's great. And Tila. Hi, I'm Tila Evans. I'm the Project Manager for Educational Systemics. Um, I do a lot of the client relationship management and communications. So as Mary said, feel free to reach out to me if you have any other questions. Great. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about SIIA. And I think the key distinction, if you don't know us, is that we are a, a trade association. And that means that our members are companies. And so the companies do any kind of digital code and content as as, as industry partner. And uh, our, the education division are made up of a lot of software applications folks. They do digital content, online learning, and all kinds of related technologies, but in elementary and secondary and post-secondary. We sort of think K-20, and that's important because there's a lot of, of, of crossover now between uh, the K-12 sector and the higher ed sector. I know when a lot of you applied for the Innovation Incubator Program, you checked, uh, checked multiple categories, and that's sort of where we're at as well. And our job is to pretty much do, as a staff here, anything that our members need for us to do, and that a lot of it runs advocacy and critical market information. Lindsay runs the market reports, which is very, very important. And we basically connect and help shape folks in the digital industry, and that could be 
the um, the educational constituents that we have, and the legislative folks, and our companies, lots of different folks. And no day is exactly like the other day, as I'm sure Lindsay can attest to. Each day, something interesting and new comes up for us as a challenge. And you can see a lot more um, about us on si.net slash education. And it will tell you about all the different programs and things that we have. So I'd like Mary or Tila then to talk about educational systemics. I think it's actually going to be Tila. Thanks, Karen. Um, so educational systemics was founded in 2001 um, by President Michael J. and Mary Ladon, who's here on the call. Um, educational systemics serves the pre-K-12 market. Uh, we really uh, try to provide sustainable solutions to publishers and ed tech companies. Uh, Michael J. also has an extensive background in educational metadata of over 30 years in experience, um, and it's also lent his expertise to several metadata initiatives. Um, at Educational Systemics, we're really committed to solving organizational issues with a systemic lens that's going to essentially create a lasting solution. Um, so some of our, our services include, but are definitely not limited to, um, product marketing. We help with product development, um, instructional design. We work a lot with content repositories, metadata, and tagging. Um, also familiar with corporate leadership, helping with organizational management. Um, and one of our new projects that we have now is education Table Talk. Um, it's a monthly radio show where we bring on um, three uh, industry leaders and talk about uh, controversial issues in the education sector. So that's been a lot of, a lot of fun for us. Um, we're always interested in doing new and exciting things. Uh, we also currently partner with the AAP around the Learning Resource Metadata Initiative. And we also, of course, participate in wonderful conferences like these ones to help um, facilitate and make meaningful connections in the in industry. So, uh, I'm very excited to be here and touch base with all of you, and feel free to reach out to me or um, to Mary after this call. Great. Thank you, Tila. Um, very quickly, I wanted to uh, hope, uh, hopefully ease a bit of confusion because of the c common use of the word presenters, etc. Um, there were 52 applicants for the Innovation Incubator Program. One, um, we sort of mutually decided with the company they weren't ready yet because they didn't have a website to show, they didn't have a product to show that was really hard to talk about what they had as an innovation. So uh, we had 51 applicants, companies, uh, that went out for review by a number of our members. And uh, they ranked them. Uh, there was a rubric, and they were scored, and, and folks could submit content, um, comments on each of them. And we took the top 10, and they've been asked to present to the attendees on that Monday afternoon, May 12th, which is in San Francisco. And the um, opening exhibition, which is right after that, and an innovation showcase is where they will be. That's the Monday. It's the sort of the start of the conference. But on Tuesday, we have been running for many years a one-to-one -one business connection program. And we have uh, taken upon ourselves, and Mary and Tila can attest to this, it is uh, very, very time consuming. But we try to set up meetings between companies that, in our words, should talk to each other. And we ask each group to fill out a, um, a short survey so that we can understand better why they should talk to each other. Now, anyone who applied for the summit for the Innovation Incubator Program and registers for the summit can actually participate in a couple of things. And one is this one-to-one -one business connection meeting, which are the topics for today. And then also we have some pitch fest sessions, which if you're interested, I'll certainly let you know about and I'll send everyone a general email about that. That's on Wednesday. But today we're going to talk about the one-to-ones. They're business connection meetings. And as young companies, for the most part, you would fall into the category we call presenting companies. And you have reasons, probably some of you, to talk to potential investors, some of you potential distributors or business partners, 
um, lots of different reasons, and it really is a business sort of exec to exec kind of thing. And so to start talking about that, I'm going to ask, um, I guess, um, Mary, or is it Tila? Tila is yeah. actually going to start uh, talking about the one to ones, and then Mary is going to talk about why you should participate. Thanks, Karen. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to give a quick review of the program process, let you know what you should expect. Um, so Educational Systemics is uh, in their ninth year of sponsoring this event, um, and we're really proud to help establish with SIA uh, meaningful connections um, with folks and help support potential business opportunities. Um, so this event was created when Karen Billings saw the need in the industry and collaborated with Mary and Michael um, to essentially build a community and give startups a chance to connect with established organizations who aren't always um, accessible, and vice versa for individuals who are established and they now have the opportunity to give concrete advice on product development or organizational management. Um, and again, just giving companies like yourself access to these key decision makers. So the one-to-one -one business connections will be Tuesday, May 13th in the afternoon in San Francisco. Um, these are fast-paced 15-minute exchanges um, in between established and startup organizations. And later on we'll talk a little bit more about the tips and um, tricks for participating and how you should prepare for those. Um, but Again, SIA and Educational Systemics schedules meetings based off of listening and presenting company surveys. And we do have a link later on for you to look um, and go ahead and check out those surveys. And this is a chance for you to tell us your company descriptions, let us know what you're looking for. Um, and typically, uh, companies will have anywhere from four to six meetings. Um, again, we do try to schedule as many meetings as possible, but this ultimately depends on which organizations are participating and what they're looking for. And we don't want to slot you with a whole bunch of companies and meetings that aren't going to have meaningful conversations or be viable for you in the end. Um, so once folks do sign up, we do begin the scheduling process, and everyone receives their final schedule one week prior to the event, and it will be um, these meetings will be in the time slot from 2 o'clock to 3.45. So I'll pass it over to Mary to talk about some of the benefits of participating. Okay. Well, first off, thanks for everyone for coming to, for attending this. And I'm looking forward to meeting you there at the one-to-one -one business meeting. It's a really uh, good place for any company that's newer or a, a established company that maybe has a new product or going in a new direction. And you want to participate to, for a couple of reasons. Number one, to make... Yes. Mary, I, I hate to interrupt, but could you speak a little bit louder? They are oh, having sorry. trouble hearing you. better? Yes, much better. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank so you. So the a main reason would be to build a strong business connections with the movers and shakers in the industry. As Karen mentioned before, these are executives and often a, a newer company or even someone with a new product may not be able to get into the people who make the decisions in, or to those more established companies. So this is your chance without having the difficulty of navigating through which company, who do I talk to, you put down what you, your preferences are, and we try to look at those preferences and match you with the people that will be most useful for you to, to meet. There will be investment. There will be um, distributors and companies that also looking for partnerships or strategic relationships. So again, this is your chance to make those connections. It's not enough time for you to present your whole idea, but it is a, a time for you to make a strong connection to a person that can help you in that. Um, it's also a chance to get to know SIA and Educational Systemics better. At SIA, it gives you a chance to see, well, what, how can SIA membership help me? What committee might I be on where I will be with people that have similar interests that can help me make decisions or that I can help strengthen the industry? Uh, and of course, educational systemics, we're always there to, we're 
happy to help out and answer questions. And, of course, you have Michael J. as a wonderful mentor. And then there's also, and Karen, I'm not sure about this Join and Grow program. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk about that. Okay. Sure. Yes, it is a new program uh, developed specifically for startups. And uh, the, the advantage is that it's a very low cost to join SIIA. It's $495 if you qualify for that first year that you're a member. Uh, we have a 12-month membership. And it, if, um, if you're about two years or less old as a company and you have less than a million dollars in revenue and high growth aspirations, then uh, you would qualify. And for that $495, every person in your company would get to participate, get the benefits, if it's either discounted registration fees or free publications, free webinars, all kinds of things. And you can see, if you just go to siia.net slash education, you'll see a lot of the things that we do and sort of the reasons that you might want to um, participate and join. And a lot of it is it's that connection that Mary just talked about. Uh, it brings you into uh, closer relationships with about 200 other companies. And those companies are investors, and they are large companies who are acquiring others. They are great business partners for you. So I'd like to talk a little bit about who is um, – uh, part of the one-to-one -one business connection meetings and then also at the conference. Now, the um, established organizations, the Pearsons and McGraw-Hills and Scholastics and those members are going to want to discover new products because they may have something that would um, fit their portfolio that they would like to um, either add on, acquire, or just form a distribution relationship with. And for those that are um, – either in the investment or the venture funds, they're looking to see where they should be spending investment dollars and bring them into their portfolios. As a startup, uh, you'll also get, of course, just besides that possibility of having somebody actually listen to your business plan, listen to what you want to do, they're so going to give you some guidance. We do have folks who are going to be acting as advisors, and those are folks who have been in the industry for quite a while. And they really have um, – a great understanding of who you should partner with or who you should talk to next because they want to contribute to the industry in that way. They will give you advice on business models and uh, particularly whether or not your product is, is ready for the market or not. Now, we, we're under a tight deadline, and if you have registered or whether or not, if you haven't registered but plan to, then you should just go to the link that's there, the SIA.net slash EIS, etc. Uh, or you can just go to slash EIS and go into the drop down menus and it'll take you to one to ones. And it'll take you to a presenting company survey. And all you need to do is to fill that out. Uh, it's pretty short, but we need to understand who it is that you want to meet with. If, if all you want is a distributor, you know, we're not going to give you four investors to talk to. Uh, we want to make sure that it's mapped as clearly and aligned with your business proposition as, as we can. Um, now, the listening companies, are they're, they're filling out a different survey. They're talking about who they want to meet. And so next week, what's going to happen is that uh, Mary and Tila and I are going to get on the phone, and we're going to look at these surveys, and we're going to say, so let's see, here's a company that needs some investment, and here's an investor who's willing to invest in a startup because some of them want, unfortunately for you, uh, $10 million in revenue because that's the, that's the kind of company they invest in. But some of them want to invest in the startups. They, they like the early stage companies. So that's who we would map uh, people with. And uh, one of us has a presenting company schedule, and the other has a listening company schedule. And the trick is to make sure that <clears throat> once we've locked and loaded a time, 15-minute time frame, 20-minute time frame, where you're going to meet with each other, then that time is locked out for both companies to meet with anybody else. Because once you get there, 
you are going to go to an assigned table where your first meeting is, and you will meet with that company, and then we'll announce at the end of the time frame that it's time to move on to your next meeting. So for about the hour and 45 minutes, it's a very busy time, and there's a lot of energy and a lot of... Um, a lot of things going on. I mean, you can see in this other one where people are busy talking to each other, and we have a number of tables this year. I think we're going to try and get about 20 tables worth of things. So do sign up, and um, I'm going to turn it back to Tila, who's going to talk to you a little bit about the tips if you're going to be doing this, because um, this, these are important things, I think, for everyone to hear. And then we want to make sure that you have a chance to ask uh, questions via the chat box. And, We'll sort of stop talking, and you can all just ask your questions in the chat box. But first, Tila, I'll turn it back to you. Great, thanks. Yeah, I'll just go through these really briefly, um, just so we do have time. I want to respect everyone's time. Um, so first is filling out the survey. Like Karen said, if you follow that URL, um, it will take you to a survey. And this is an important process because this is what's going to benefit you for quality matches and what's going to help us make um, the best matches for you. So we do um, encourage you to expand on your company description, integrate keywords that are going to help us determine the best match. Um, if you do have companies that you would like to meet with, um, please let us know, and we'll try to accommodate your request. Um, however, this doesn't mean that we guarantee those meetings. It's just something for us to make note during the scheduling process. Um, you know, we've, we've done a survey of listening companies who have participated, and we've had some feedback from them on what they recommend for presenting companies. Um, one is researching organizations prior to the meeting. So really target your message to companies that you're going to be meeting with. Um, be prepared with, with um, questions that are specific to that organization. You know, for example, if you're meeting with a VC, you know, create clear, solid points for financial backing. Um, Another important one is to arrive on time for your scheduled meeting. So like Karen said, there's about a 15-minute um, exchange, and then we call out and you switch to your next meeting. Um, so it's really important for you to be there. Um, listening companies uh, put a time aside to speak with you, and they do appreciate you being on time and um, being there during that transition. Um, and you may also see them during the conference. You know it's the second day, but that um, doesn't mean that your scheduled meetings will change. Um, perhaps if you meet with someone earlier, just make sure you are still still um, there for your scheduled time, and if you both talk for a brief five minutes and decide mutually that it's okay for you to leave, um, that's, that's okay. But if there, for any reason you can't attend your meetings, please notify us via email, um, uh, via phone as soon as possible. Um, another important distinction is the elevator speech first demos. So during the 15 minutes, you don't really have time to explain your entire company or your whole product. So really use this as a time to establish a meaningful relationship with them. Um, and this will lead to number five, where you can schedule a follow-up meeting. If you, you know, if you see that both of your missions align, there's some potential business opportunities, um, then use that to exchange contact information and schedule a follow-up meeting. And last but not least, so one more reminder to arrive on time. Um, and if you have any questions about your schedule, you can always contact us to clarify. So with that, we'll just move into questions and unmute everybody. Okay. Perfect. So feel free to put any questions in the chat, or um, and we'll move over. And they have contact information for uh, myself and Mary LaDawn. Feel free to reach out via email, phone, um, or Twitter. Well, Brady's asking, where can we view a list of companies attending these uh, meetings? So, and Mary, if you could still speak up louder, it's really oh, hard to sorry. hear. Oh, sorry. Um, so Brady, there's not a list of the companies attending the meetings just yet, but there is the, the overall list oh. of attendees on the SIIA website. And so we will be drawing the listening companies or the companies that you'll be presenting to from that list. But all of those won't be, pre won't be available. Yep. Yeah, the, the folks that are interested are typically some of the larger companies that are looking for acquisitions. Um, some of those that are um, 
uh, the, the venture investors, of course, and some of the advisors there. I, what I would recommend is that you go to the website for the conference, which is simply si.net slash EIS, and then um, under the networking drop down, I think there's a look who's coming. And that will give you an up to the minute registration list of the people who have told us that they w it's okay to list their name and company name. So you can look at the company names and just see if there's somebody there. If you're really interested, it's possible that they're new, new to the organization and new to the summit. So um, they may not even know about being a listening company yet, and therefore we could invite them. So let us know if you've got uh, people that you'd like to meet with um, that are on that list so we can at least invite them for you. We can't promise that they will say yes because some of them come for very different reasons. So um, let's see what we have for questions here. We have a thank you. That's very nice. Um, and we have the list of all attendees that um, I believe Lindsay just came up with. More questions. We still have a few minutes left. So again, all it takes for you to be eligible to participate, have, to have SIA and Educational Systemics set up these meetings for you uh, is really twofold. It's to fill out the survey, and you can do that first, but we're not going to start to schedule meetings until we see that you have registered. What I have tried to do is to um, Make sure that the folks who are um, you know, eligible for this are, are, know about it, which we appreciate. Um, Sabari has a question about, um, the, about PR, and I think that's referring to the Innovation Incubator finalists. We are planning to put out a press release later this week. Um, again, if they're the ones who have registered and who are going to be finalists, and we will be uh, letting the world know about the Innovation Incubator finalists and who they're going to be. And so that's, a, um, that's a, an, another thing. And then there will be also um, sorry, a note uh, is that the finalists are actually going to have a quick orientation call uh, late next week just to make sure that they're ready for the different presentations and things that they have to do there. Um, about how many meetings should they expect? Mary or Tila, what, how many do we typically say? Well, we yeah, I would, oh, I, would, I would say typically um, four to six meetings. But again, um, it all depends on who is participating in the event. Because like we mentioned earlier, we don't want to have slot you a whole bunch of meetings that aren't going to be viable for you. So um, you know, it could be anywhere from four to six, um, more or less. Um, but we definitely try to schedule with schedule you with as many meetings as makes sense. Okay. I'll take the last question, which is the difference between strategic investment and early stage investment. A strategic investment is usually made by a company such as, um, say, Macmillan Ventures or the McGraw-Hill people, Intel has them as well. And they are companies who have a group within them that fund innovation and fund companies at various stages. It typically comes, that money typically comes with a sort of a right of first refusal to um, uh, bid for the company or, ad, or to um, invest at a later stage. But it is a close re working, closer working relationship with a company that you would be partnering with. An early stage investment is going to be made by a venture capital firm, and they are the ones who, like an angel investment or early stage investment, they're willing just to put some money in, and in return, they're going to want some uh, sort of piece or portion of the company. So if you're going out for a, um, you know, you want $10 million down the road, then um, and five different groups come, you know, come out with ten, two million each or something. What will happen is that, that for that quote ten million, there's some ownership of the company that they would get. So it's a difference between uh, sort of ownership at the end. Um, and then I think to see the other presenters' comments in chat. Um, pretty much the other presenters we have. Um, 
I was going to say, we haven't really been, like the other presenters like Lindsay has been just putting on the information about the, um, the one-to-ones, et cetera. I'm not sure what you mean by other presenters, unless you mean the, um, the questions that the people ask who are on the call, and those I think were available to everyone. Um, the, you know, those of us here who uh, sometimes pass information back and forth trying to decide who's going to answer a question or uh, something like that uh, isn't that critical. But anything that is, uh, you know, important as sort of one person here is is really, I think, um, for everyone. So, I would go to sia.net slash either EIS for Education Industry Summit or slash education to get further information. And unless there's a question that comes up um, right away, I think we'll probably end the call. We asked for 30 minutes, and I think that um, uh, we're about over. I do get another question from Lisa. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Is uh, there, yes, the event scheduled for Wednesday. There are a number of sessions. There's some plenaries. There's some sessions, and within the sessions, the breakouts, there are what we call pitch fests. And I'll make sure that you get information on that. But you could apply to quote present to pitch um, a short version of your business plan or a short version of your marketing plan how you're going to reach your uh, education customers, and or just a sh very even shorter version of your elevator pitch. And there is going to be a Shark Tank kind of group there, but they're going to be nice people. They're there to help you, to help sort of help you refine all of those things. So I will make sure that um, you get that information as well. But it's on the schedule if you go to SIIA.net slash education, E-I-S, then you will see uh, the schedule for the Pitch Fest. And they are um, sessions, there will probably be, be six to eight people presenting in each, and then the advisors who are sitting there, um, not sharks, but really nice, nice people, will give you helpful and I think informative feedback. Looks like that's it. So we're going to close the call. I'll ask Lindsay to um, uh, send out, or I will send out, but we, we've recorded the call. So what can happen is if you're interested in having somebody else listen to it at your company or for those who missed the thing altogether, we'll send out uh, the recording, and it comes with the slides. So you'll see both of those uh, very soon. And hopefully, uh, I know that we all appreciate, as do Tila and Mary and Lindsay here at SIA, and Mary and Tila at Educational Systemics, uh, the time that you spent with us. And we will all be at the summit in San Francisco. And actually, this is Tuesday. So guess what? About exactly four weeks from now, you all could be presenting in meetings that we've set up for you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Great. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.